uh, and uh, the the bulls of the longs are cheering and smiling. Omar Najia, Global Head of Derivatives of BB Energy, good morning. Another week kicks off, another high on the oil price. Uh, yeah, so basically we got to this uh, 57.50 level and the next target is basically about a dollar higher, 58.40, something like You're that. You're talking WTI now, just for clarification. Yeah, we're talking WTI now. So I think, um, I think we will head higher. Uh, don't forget that the move started about 33.60 on WTI. So at some point the market has to correct. Uh, and I think basically if the market does kind of get down to about 53, 50, 54, something like that, then that'll be the start of the correction. But bottom line is further forwards, I think oil is going to go up big time. I think it's got at least, you know, I, I think it has a long, long way to go. I think it wouldn't surprise me to say, to see like, you know, $80 Brent and all this kind of stuff. And Over what uh, sort of know, time horizon? This year, this, this year, year, just to get people kind of have the reaction that, that we're looking for. Um, on, on, on the S&P, I think, again, uh, higher. I'm getting nervous about the S&P uh, simply because, you know, everything, you know, this, this 1.9 trillion uh, people have been expecting for a long, long time now. And, and the longer it takes to come in, the more of a, a damp squib it becomes, basically. So I'm getting a little bit, uh, a little bit iffy on the S&P, I have to say. Uh, dollar going higher, dollar index, Bitcoin up. Um, you know, can uh, we can, can we, we have a continuing about. can we have a continuing strengthening dollar and strengthening oil price together? Absolutely, there is no people often make that mistake. They say there's a correlation between the dollar and oil prices, or a dollar and commodities. And in general, they're right. But 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 correlations depend on time frames. Depend on. Um, you know, when you're looking at them, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's not true to say that if the dollar goes up, oil comes down, not at all. Case in point, the dollar has been coming down for, I don't know how many years now, uh, let's say since uh, last year, the year before, and oil prices didn't go up, did they? They went down. So there is no uh, correlation as such, or the correlation is very, very weak, less than, you know, less than, than one needs to pay attention to. Let's bring in Lori Hitayan, MENA Director at the Natural Resource Governance Institute. Lori, uh, good morning. Welcome back to the table. The, the one sort of point of news overnight that uh, would welcome your thoughts on is this ongoing question about Iran and the return of the Iranian-American relationship under the new uh, Biden administration. Did you hear anything in the recent soundings that gives you optimism for that relationship to recover? So basically it is full of optimism, I guess, like because uh, with the appointees that we made by the Biden administration, Rob Malley, et cetera. So we know that the trajectory is to engage with Iran. The, the, the issue is like, when are they going to do that? So, the, so we know that there will be an engagement. So, and then uh, the second point is like, you see now the positioning, right, through media. So the Khamenei says something, President Biden says something else. So this is like kind of this pre-negotiation uh, engagement. So sooner or later, they will be sit sitting on the table. I think today the issue is like the sequencing, who goes first, right? Should Iran go first or should uh, the US go first? And this is like something that needs to be solved so that they go back to the uh, table of uh, negotiations. In the meantime, I guess like from what we are reading, Iran is pushing the envelope and trying to see like how much they can go with it by, uh, by increasing a bit of the export of uh, oil, right? And uh, so, and so that just to check, so they're trying to check how far they can go before sitting on the table of negotiations. But I think the US administration today has to think if they want to have an impact or to, they want to influence the outcome of the Iranian elections, right? Because today we have two paths. Either you can end up with a conservative government in Iran, a la Ahmadinejad, and then you'll have every, all the conservatives in line. And I'm not sure if Khamenei wants to go through an Ahmadinejad uh, direction, or he wants to go through a younger generation looking into the country uh, to, uh, to uh, build the economy, etc. And it will, it, so 
It is. It, so perhaps for have... these for these next few months, the rhetoric both in Tehran and Washington is more for a domestic audience than an external audience. I mean, uh, so, Biden uh, has to be appearing to be strong. Obviously, Khamenei in the run into the election also has to be appearing to be strong. Yes, exactly. And at the same time, like if the if the uh, the Iranians want to lift all the sanctions, so what is left for the Americans to go and discuss what if that is left uh, lifted? So I think it's like uh, that. That this is important. Like what concessions should both make? to go back to the table. This is what we are looking for. What is acceptable for both to go back to the table? And then, or, or the US would decide that I'm not going to engage with Iran now until a new administration comes in in Iran, because it will be important. Look, if you have a conservative, ala Ahmadinejad, so then all the revenues that will come from the lifting the, uh, the sanctions might go to the proxies, etc. So we'll end up in a difficult situation again. Maybe well, if you have a younger generation. Washington's uh, Biden administration's gesture to uh, 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 sort of pull back from Yemen, from taking supporting proactive engagement into the Yemen war, in of itself is a kind of indirect concession or signal to Tehran that you know we're willing to. Uh, to bring a new idea Definitely. to the table. Definitely, but I don't think that this is what the Iranians want, right? Because ending the Yemeni war or telling or uh, removing the Houthis from the list of the terrorism doesn't affect the uh, the economy of Iran, right? So they want like really No, but it is a message. It, it is, a, is message. a message. Yes, and this is why I said at the beginning that the trajectory is positive. They are heading towards engagement. They will go to it towards the engagement. And these are signs, positive signs from the Biden administration. Look, guys, we're bringing on board someone that understands Iran. We're bringing on board some uh, people that uh, have been working on the JCPOA. We are, we are uh, uh, for uh, ending the war in Yemen, but at the same time, they talked to the Saudis and they told the Saudis, but we, we are engaged in protecting uh, your safety as well. So it's okay. not that if we end up the Yemeni war, it means that we will leave you and go to the Iranians. And this is what the Saudis want as well as a sign that this Iranian deal, the new deal, I guess, because it, it won't be the same. From what, what I'm understanding, the US is not interested in going back to the same deal. There are other issues on the table. So the, um, the American, uh, the Saudis, UAE, everybody in the region want to understand that this will not be against them. And yeah. they want to be part of the and I think there, well. there is there is there is a few months of a dance here. We've got an election in in Iran. We have an election in Israel as well. Uh, will Netanyahu uh, be back in office? So there's a few moving parts before everybody can sort of get around the table. Let's bring in uh, Professor Andre Belli, founder and CEO of Balsen. Uh, Andre, Dr. Andre, good, good, good morning. Um, your, your, your mute is still on, so I'll ask you to unmute there and to give us an update from your corner of Eastern Europe and the uh, restarting of the Nord Stream 2 pipe was starting to be laid over the weekend. How do you see the unfolding dynamics in uh, Northeastern Europe? Yeah, no, it's interesting news that actually the Nord Stream 2 constructions have been relaunched, although I would not put all my fingers betting that it's going to be finally built. I mean, there is still a risk of the US sanctions, and there is a risk of various disagreements which may uh, go on. But yes, I mean, the course is there, and I would say there are more chances for the pipeline to exist rather than not to exist. What I have emphasized, I think, before already. Well, it's sort of 80% built nearly, right? I mean, it's at the end of its building phase rather than the beginning. It's at the end of the building phase. And I always said that we tend to overestimate uh, the impact of, of the Nord Stream 2. So the fact that Nord Stream 2 will not appear will not impact on Russia's positions in the gas markets, neither on European gas markets. Likewise, once we have the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, no major changes will occur. The only change which may occur is when Germany will merge the two gas hubs and will be becoming bigger hub or the biggest even hub on continental Europe. 
and that could occur in the following years and that I guess uh, the German business wants to see. And, and on the wider politics of the Navalny question that Omar brought up earlier, he's very concerned about his health. So he asked me to ask you if you could have an update as to will he be allowed any visits in the Gulag? Will Omar be able to visit and bring some cakes uh, or will he not be seen for three years? I guess it's not a question to me to address and uh, rather to... Rather but is there any bigger politics here or is this going to fade away, do you think, as another failed attempt to shake the unshakable Putin? Well, it depends what was the attempt and who done the attempt. Uh, it depends a little bit whether Navalny was by himself or was there an internal force within the Russian inner circle, Kremlin's inner circle, who pushed Navalny in order to make a change. So it's the latter. We don't know what the effect is. Certainly the latter is more interesting, so let's pretend it's true. Exactly. So the latter would imply that there are some changes within the inner circle. And we may observe them in the next couple of months, let's say like this. Maybe even earlier. Uh, so we may see some reshuffling within the governmental. The research I've been doing on this, Andrea, is that the decision by Putin two years ago to increase the age of retirement pension, uh, I think by eight years for men and five years by women or something like that, but substantial uh, change to the pension laws uh, resulted him in l potentially losing or eroding a lot of his core support. Is that any sort of an accurate analysis or what's your own view on that? Well, I guess he lost his core support already a long time ago, but uh, we, we cannot assess it because there are no really reliable um, polls and uh, neither elections can reflect it. But what we can be sure of is that uh, the political system as such was not shaped. So you may have a situation where some internal forces would be uh, different, some internal configurations, but uh, the protest in itself didn't create a major trouble to the system. Moreover, uh, let's say the, 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 the Ministry of Interior Affairs or all the police forces, they kind of gave a hint to the protesters that they would be ready to shoot in case of a need. So it basically overall gives a pretty difficult, let's say, atmosphere for those who wanted to see a rapid change with the um, social well, you would imagine that 20, 21 years now in power, there's obviously going to be exhaustion on different levels. Omar, but meanwhile, back at the ranch and the immediate sense of where does the oil market go from here? And what can disrupt the party, the march to $80 a barrel? Uh, will euphoria, will the simple vaccine roll out to just the sense that there's life after this terrible dark window be enough to carry all boats? Or is there potential uh, for real economic recovery, real tangible demand, OPEC keeping 6 million barrels locked in? What needs to happen for this next part of the journey to keep moving? Look, I think um, we've seen like lots of uh, quote unquote miracles in 2021. Uh, you know, Navalny, I think, is the third or fourth or fifth per person to survive poisoning by the most deadly nerve agent known to man. Uh, once again. Uh, so I think it's not too far of a stretch, uh, being serious for a second, to think that um, you have two things going on, I think, in the oil market. First is this uh, push-up, which is basically improving sentiment and taking the backwardation out of the market. Once that get, gets done uh, and demand is, uh, quote, unquote, uh, strong, otherwise the backwardation wouldn't be there. The second thing is uh, the, the, the product stores basically can get seriously depleted. For example, 
jet can only be stored for a relatively short period of time before you have to kind of get rid of it. Um, or you have to kind of do tests and all this kind of stuff. So so it's 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 fungible stuff. You mean it's just chemically stuff. it can yeah. sit? Yeah, it can sit for two, three months, six months, but more than that, I think it becomes, you know, very, very problematic. So this stuff is is... Um, um, you know, past its sell-by date, so to speak. So once once those stores disappear, go, uh, get released out of storage, if you have a demand spike, <clears throat> that's going to cause a lot of problems for, for refiners, and you're going to start having a kind of quote-unquote bidding war. So I think the risk there is to the upside. Geopolitically, the risk is to the upside. Because I, 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 I hear what you say about Iran and Biden and all this kind of stuff. But I, I, honestly, I really don't believe that people are stupid, neither the US nor Iran. Um, and, and there is no kind of middle ground. Iran isn't going to sit down with all its enemies on one side and it on the other and be told that they have to go back in compliance before the people who left the deal do anything. It's, it's, it's unworkable. I, it's silly. Um, so you add it all together, geopolitical risk again, I think is to the upside. If you add kind of an inflationary kind of look, which I don't believe it, but if you add that to the to that kind of scenario, uh, commodities do well, and I think it's consensus now that commodities are going to do uh, very well in 2021. So you add that all together, and I think you have a, a strong case for higher oil prices uh, towards the end of the year. You know, um, add on to that COVID vaccines improvement sentiment happiness, joy, and all the rest of it, then, yeah, I think I think you can make a good case for prices going up. Dancing on the beach in the summer. Uh, Lori, uh, well, it's always dancing on the beaches in Beirut, a beautiful, beautiful city that it is. Um, but meanwhile, across the Med in Libya, there seems to be, in some ways, some tangible progress uh, towards a, a consolidated political position, government or an emerging government. But meanwhile, there's still a foreign uh, military presence in the country. And we even had the U.S. ambassador over the weekend calling on the foreign uh, forces to leave the country. Uh, uh, and was very public about that. Uh, uh, I'm wondering what's your own analysis there? Is the 1.23 million barrels of oil coming out of Libya safe or is there still political vulnerability? Uh, so what we're seeing now, all the possible spoilers are supporting the new government or the new uh, presidential uh, council or whatever they call it. So, uh, and this is a good sign. So at least no, uh, even those like, like, the UAE or Egypt that might thought that the results were against the group of people that they were supporting uh, uh, th that lost. So they are supporting the system. They are giving a chance to this new uh, setup to uh, 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 to work. And uh, as long as that uh, that is the case, and we've heard the uh, the new president of this council saying that my aim is the economic de development. My aim is to uh, give uh, people a decent life. So that means money, and that means that the oil will, will uh, keep on being produced and being sold so that this is the own, only revenue for them. So I think if this, uh, this group of people are given the chance uh, to work, so then you will see oil flowing from, the, uh, from Libya and 1.2, 1.6, that, uh, that will be stable. The moment you see signs of disagreement, and again, uh, all the supporters, the foreign supporters are in disagreement and there might be disruption of the work of, the work of this presidential uh, of this new council, so then you might think of maybe there will be uh, some cuts uh, from the uh, from the oil flow. So this is the reading now. So let's hope that things will be uh, stable. But and for the foreign military presence, I think that is a bigger issue that needs like a bigger settlement between all the uh, between the definitely between the Libyans and the others. So, but I as long as everybody now is okay with this new council, so I think oil will continue to flow from Libya. Dr. Andre, in Europe, we still have delays on the COVID stimulus package being approved and distributed. Uh, the US still working its way through its next uh, freebie. And the markets are both you know, expecting these uh, injection of liquidity uh, to keep everything floated. Uh, what's your own sense for Europe? Will they get to, the, to this uh, stimulus distribution? Will it make a difference? I mean, the delay in recovery in Europe seems to push 
the likelihood of, of summer on the beaches into the only possible rather than probable uh, zone. The second recession, further lockdown seem to be burdening Europe. Well, yeah, I would say, um, uh, of course, we may see a recovery package at some point, but we have to understand the scale of all the uh, all the packages that actually the European Union has to consider uh, within one, let's say, a very short time zone and um, time period. And that also includes a pretty ambitious Green Deal, where major controversies between member states may still uh, appear, particularly on the spending side, on the priority side yeah, of the uh, of the next financial package. And uh, it all means that governmental or uh, central banks will intervene more. And uh, I mean, I, what I'm hearing from the guard is more about the monetary poli the monetary contribution is pretty exhausted and it's really now in the hands of the fiscal. Similarly, the language you're hearing in the US, the central bankers have shot all their bullets more or less, and it's really up to the fiscal side now. Yeah, but the fiscal side, you can understand that actually the incomes to the budgets are way lower than uh, they used to be. Yeah, so basically uh, all this recession shown in macroeconomic terms like GDP do not show the level of uh, money which is not received by the state. Moreover, GDP doesn't allow to see all this, let's say, uh, short-term uh, uh, help that the state fiscal bodies provide to SMEs, including not collecting taxes from employees, for example. For employers don't pay the tax or on employees like this, they don't, they keep the employments onward. But you can also understand that it's actually a non-received revenue by a state. Yeah, and what's going to be the next stage? Uh, so I would say uh, there are serious concerns, and uh, it's also interesting to see the European Union uh, dilemmas in uh, hand with the United States dilemmas. United States who declared uh, an environmental package a climate package, uh, investments into uh, electric vehicle charging stations is a huge investment, is a practically an investment into power generation, which is not going to be sufficient to... And it's certainly, I mean, the European package, which is also interesting because it's the first time that we're going to have a federal debt, a federal borrowing on behalf of the commission. Let's yes. go to our survey question and see uh, so much of the... Uh, re demand recovery this year is put on the burden of jet fuel and whether people will be getting into airplanes. So we've got a double question today. Did you use air travel on your summer holidays last year? Yes or no? Uh, and then the second question, uh, once everybody gets that question answered, which isn't too complicated, uh, did you get on an airplane on your summer holidays last year? Yes or no? Um, the bigger question is, will you get on one this year? Uh, so the second question, uh, Irene, if we can pull it up or we have to wait um, before we go around. Okay, uh, she'll put it, oh, there we go. Do you plan to use air travel on your summer holidays in 2021? Uh, and uh, we'll see what the answer to those two different questions look like. Uh, Omar, uh, looking at the week ahead, of course, it's Monday morning. We broke through $60 Brent. It's pulled back a few pennies. Uh, what's your own expectation for the week ahead? Uh, anything to be guided by? Um, I think basically the, um, like I was saying, targets 58.40. Um, and if Again, the market WTI, does, right? WTI, and if the market does break down below, say fifty three fifty, then oh, I think, think the top is in. Yeah, I think I think you know you're looking for a top. I mean, we've we've had such a huge move. We've come up basically in a straight line, thirty three sixty four, 
to 57, whatever it is, 50, call it. So I think, yeah, we, we, we need to correct. Having said that, above here uh, with the market, um, you know, if you look at resistance, there's not much until you get to $65. The most important bit, though, is wherever this coming high is, after we correct, the market most likely will set a new high above that high. So in my opinion, basically, the, the higher, the better. So if it gets to 58.50, let's say, this week, then in another three, four weeks after it falls a little bit uh, or falls you know, substantially, we, we, we will be able to get back on top of that high. So uh, the higher, the better, in my view. Um, let's get the answer to the first question. The survey, did you travel on an airplane last summer? I know what you did last summer. You didn't do anything. You sat at home. Uh, I'm one of the 23%. Um, okay. Um, and what about the second question? Do we have an answer on that yet? Uh, okay. So the inverse. Uh, jet fuel will be burning. They better pull it out of storage and clean it up uh, or there will be problems. Um, Laurie, uh, your outlook for the week ahead, as we say, oil prices seem to be uh, as, 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 as very clearly articulated by Omar on the upward and have been for a while. Uh, nothing's interrupting this, no matter what issues here and there there might be with the COVID vaccine rollout. Uh, it's, it's, it's all rising. Do you see anything in the coming week that would interrupt this rise? So I, I, let's say that I don't see that, but again, like all surprises happen and we're, we're seeing all the, yesterday, there was this article on Bloomberg saying that it will take us seven years to recover from all this va vaccine, from all this COVID issues. Hopefully not think, recover from the vaccine. That no, be... from, the, from COVID. But again, like they have this uh, amazing tracker of vaccination that gives you like every time, like how many years it will take or months. So that was a bit uh, disturbing. But I think that we, uh, this is how humanity survives on hope, right? So we are saying like more than 60% are hoping to travel in summer. So this is hope and this is how we survive. And this is how the brand has reached $60 today on hope. Uh, so it's on positivity that we survive, we thrive and we evolve. So I think this is going to continue and thank you, Saudi Arabia. So at least, for, Mar for February, March, uh, since they are, they are cutting these 1 million uh, uh, barrels. So we'll see that. Let's see afterwards what will happen. If they Hopefully, stick with it, I mean, who knows? Exactly. They, might, uh, they might find that it's something they want to step away from. So that's why we don't know later. But now let's enjoy the $60 and let's enjoy all these positivities, I guess. And we'll be looking, at least for me, like I'll be, I'll be continuing to monitor what's happening between Iran and the US. You know, like the Iranians are saying by 21 February, we're not anymore obliged or have any uh, uh, reason to continue with the, or to impl uh, implement the, what, what they're calling the additional protocol. So that is something to look for forward to see how this will develop. But okay. let's hope that positivity will continue. Dr. Andre, the last word with you today. Uh, two thirds of this table of this uh, meeting today, fifty odd people logging in are uh, planning to get on an airplane for their summer holidays. It gives a hope. Why not? And I agree with Laurie that hope is important. However, we have to understand that actually a third wave is is very possible. It's actually not only possible; it's predicted by some scientists as part of the. Uh, part of the, the virus uh, cycles. Moreover, considering that uh, that vaccines were very quickly done, I mean, I'm not expert in this field, so I'm not going to be like pretending anything, but uh, there are a lot of critique towards uh, the effects of the vaccines, particularly on asymptomatic transfer of disease. Because if the vaccines have zero effect on asymptomatic, it means that actually there is no um, point in the vaccines in uh, uh, against the restrictions, right? Because I mean, one of the reasons why uh, there are so much of restrictions because of the asymptomatic uh, transfer of the diseases. But let's say is, is to be proved or denied by 
people who are better there at certainly there certainly seems to be no doubt that uh, the on the whole the vaccines have come in record time that in the average they appear to be working and there's no doubt that there is uh, some possibilities that they could be uh, outliers and it could be very possible according to the british minister of vaccination i think that's his title what a title to have but he said yesterday that um the likelihood is, is it will be like the, the flu vaccine. It's something you'll have to take every year. But what we'll have to do now is get back to work and thank Lori and thank Dr. Andre and thank Omar for your insights and analysis today. Uh, and uh, uh, we look forward to catching up with everybody through the week. $60 Brent week. Uh, that seems to be the, the headline, at least for the, the next five minutes. Everything can change in no time. But all the best and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.